the SEC apparently, reportedly, has support for a nine-game conference schedule. That would be three permanent opponents and six rotating opponents so that you play all 15 other teams once Texas and Oklahoma join, all 15 other teams in the conference twice within a four-year span. We've been talking about it for a while. I, I saw the case for a 1-7 format for the schools that are not exactly, uh, how do you, what's a good way to end this statement without it hurting somebody's feelings? I don't know that there's a way to. I, I think it would have made sense to keep four non-conference games for some of the teams that do not routinely get top 20 recruiting classes year in and year out, right? There is a there's a tier level in the SEC. And those that might be in tier three and tier four might want to make sure that their non conference schedule includes four games that are all winnable, right? And this is also difficult for teams like Kentucky that have a team such as Louisville that is a constant rival. At Florida the same way with Florida State as an end of the year rival from another conference that counts as one of their non conference games. And the schedule just got more difficult for those teams. But regardless, uh, it appears that there is support for a nine-game schedule, and the reasoning behind that sits here in this Chris Lowe article over at ESPN over the weekend. SEC leaning toward nine-game football league schedule, which, quote, not only adds value for TV, but protects season ticket sales. I found this incredibly interesting. And not because of the subject matter so much, uh, because, you know, we all knew it was either going to be 3-6 or 1-7. The, the SEC scheduling format was going to be one of one or the other. It says it protects season ticket sales, donations, and college football playoff access for more teams. One SEC athletic director told ESPN. I think this is very strange. Uh, another league source said there were a few schools on the fence between eight and nine games back in May during the SEC spring meetings, but added, I think there's ample support now to get to nine. More rivalries can be played on an annual basis, and the content that an extra league game would provide for TV would mean a lot more money. That's a very interesting statement, right? Because initially, it was reported that a ninth SEC conference game for each team would not include any additional money from ESPN. That had not been agreed to at that point. So, at that point, why would they? Why would they include that? It appears that ESPN has let it be known to some of these ADs, hey, if we get that ninth conference game, uh, we might be willing to uh, bump you up maybe to, say, uh, Big Ten levels. Big Ten numbers. We can talk about it. But... It's strange that all of this changed right around the time that the Big Ten got their media rights deal finalized and announced to the world, right? Uh, somebody at ESPN let something be known. Now, tell me this. where th This is a conflict of interest, right, for ESPN to be reporting this story about the SEC conference game, right? Not so much the news that they might be moving to a ninth conference schedule, but Hearing something like this, where more rivalries can be played on an annual basis and the content that an extra league game would provide for TV would mean a lot more money. Is this ESPN trying to let it be known that, hey, we're going to make sure that the SEC remains at the same level that the Big Ten is, etc.? Like, what what is going on here? This is just a really strange... Like, at some point, if you're ESPN, uh, do, you, do you try and not... Comment on this? Like, I know you want to get ahead of it. You want the clicks. You want all that. And I'm not saying that Chris Lowe does a bad job or he's just some lackey for ESPN. Chris Lowe's been a really, really good writer for a long time. But it's it's strange that all of these coaches that initially were talking about, it, hey, we have to have four non-conference games. Uh, we already play in the toughest league in the country. Why would we move to nine when it's already a murder's row of opponents every year? And now they're all switching over. Like, I, I'm just, I'm so confused at this. Uh, this one, at Texas A&M coach Jimbo Fisher told ESPN this week he thinks nine games is probably the best scenario. That way you can keep alive the rivalries and the secondary rivalries. Because in this league, the secondary rivalries are almost as important as the primary ones. Yeah. 
Missouri's Eli Drinkwitz said this summer, to me, it has to be a 3-6 model. Why is the Missouri coach saying that it has to be a 3-6 model? I mean, that's absurd. Like, Missouri has no natural rivals in the SEC whatsoever. Uh, unless they think, unless Missouri believes that they're going to play Oklahoma, Texas, and Texas A&M every year, or toss in Arkansas or whatever, how is this good for Missouri as far as wins and losses? Like, I, I'm, I'm so confused at this. I, you guys jump in the comments if you're watching on YouTube and tell me, uh, th- is this not conflict of interest for ESPN to be reporting this story about a conference that only has a media rights deal with ESPN? That, that, this is strange, right? I, I know that I sound a little weird about this, but, uh, you know, it just it feels like maybe ESPN is trying to send some kind of a message. Like, like ESPN maybe should not have been involved in this particular story. And I know that they don't want to give the story away, but my God, it just, it, it, something doesn't sit right with me on this. And I don't know what that is yet. Maybe you guys can tell me. But it, it feels really weird. When I read it over the weekend, I said, well, what is what is happening here? All right, we'll hop off of that. Uh, my apologies for going long, but my God, uh, just a, the way that media is done nowadays is very strange. I say that as a guy that's sitting in my office talking to you. Thanks for listening to Winning Cures Everything. Make sure and subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. And make sure to leave a nice five-star review. You can follow Gary on Twitter, at GaryWCE. And the show is at Winning Cures. Be sure to check out the merch in our web store and share the show.